Right, so we've had, um, we've pureed all the ingredients to a nice smooth consistency. Usually the onions and the scallion in conjunction with the uh, coconut oil um, blends very easily. But sometimes if it's a little, if it's not juicy enough, um, the herbs are not juicy enough and they don't uh, break down easily, you can just add a little water, maybe like quarter cup, a little water to it and just put it on a high speed and it will grind it right through to puree. And we have it right here. Oh my God, that smells so good. You know what it smell like? It smell like the pimento seed is still green because pimento, spice, pimento seed, we always say pimento seeds, they have like three stages, green, ripe and when they're ripe they're like blue purple like a bluish purple color and they smell like um they smell like rum really pretty almost like a juniper feeling and then we dry them in the sun and then they become stinging and sharp um i'm getting everything in here with the scotch bonnet and everything so This is a consistency. See it? This is a consistency of the jerk seasoning from scratch. See how beautiful it is? Almost like a chutney consistency. Or like I would say, like a guacamole consistency is beautiful. It smells amazing. Okay. I'm gonna taste it a little bit just to check it. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Perfect amount of salt, perfect amount of seasoning. A beautiful, harmonious combination, perfect. Now, this is the bottled one. Um, I actually bought this one from the store. And you can see that the consistency is quite the same. Right? So I got it spot on. I didn't lead you astray. Okay. This is nice, but this has vinegar. I can smell the vinegar right away. And you can add vinegar to it if you like. I just prefer not to. Um, another thing too, you know, I love very rich foods and I love to take things up a couple notches higher. And so you can put one heaping spoon of the bottled one, right? And you can put a portion of the one that we made. Just massage it everything. And you see, I kept, I put gloves on because I didn't want to handle the chicken with my bare hands and have the seasonings go up into my nails and all of that. So I just want to massage everything in like so. And look how beautiful that is. Each piece is perfectly coated. Now, when you're gonna marinate meat like this, you wanna put it into a container and have it neatly packed and tightly packed like this. For a day or even two, if you like, before you take it out and put it in the oven. Okay, now, we're, now that we've massaged it in perfectly and evenly, we're going to put it in the pan and then put it in the oven. You wanna preheat your oven to at least 350 degrees. And you wanna put the chicken in the oven for the first 
10 minutes at 350 and then you want to turn it down to 300 and let it slow roast all right so i'm going to put it in this pan it's a large pan why because you want your chicken to space out you don't want your chicken to be stacked and crowded because it won't brown evenly on both sides so you'll see and you want to lay the skin down first on all of them see this piece of the skin you want to lay it down first because once our side is brown and we turn it on the other side that's going to be the last side that it sits on and if that's the last side that it sits on it's more beautiful the skin gets nice and crispy you want to do the skin side first and then turn it over on the other side and get it soggy and it just you know melts back out into the juices you want that to be the last and you just like grab the the the, the oil that's actually withdrawn the coconut oil that's withdrawn from the meat and just like spread it on top and makes a nice shiny glaze in the end right oh and i have a little secret i'm gonna show you my little secret in the end okie dokie and this is going to go into the oven at 350 degrees So we leave it in for 10 minutes at 350 degrees, and then we turn it down to 300 for a slow roast for about an hour to brown, and then we turn it over on the other side to finish cooking. Our chicken has browned on one side, and we're going to flip it on the other side. We're gonna turn them over on the other side so that they may continue to brown and crisp now the chicken is nice and brown I'll show you what it looks like here perfectly done but before we take it out i'm going to give you a little secret because it's done in the oven, but we want to taste it like it's been on the grill. So you're going to take a little bit of your coconut oil, okay? And you are going to drop it onto the base of the pot. I'm sorry, of the base of the oven. And you see how it's smoking? See how it's smoking there? And then you're gonna close it. And that is what's going to give you the jerkness of the jerk chicken. When you take that out, it's going to be perfect because it will taste like it's been slow cooking on a barbecue summer grill. And voila, here is your jerk chicken. Beautifully browned, crispy, and well seasoned. I hope that this was also a success for you, as it always is for me. <laughs> Until next time, with Spice is Nice with Denise. Cheers.